Hey, Juliana, I thought you were trying to lose weight. Yeah, girl, I'm intuitive eating. It's great. Today, we're talking six weight loss mistakes. I'm someone that has made every single one of these mistakes. I've probably made more than these mistakes, but for the interest of time, we're gonna talk about these six. These are mistakes that I made for years on my fitness journey. More recently, as someone who was pregnant during the pandemic and gained a bunch of weight, and in a former life, somebody that used to drink their weight in apple martinis and polish it off with Whataburger. Yeah, Whataburger. It was close to my apartment. Then in 2015, I got pretty shredded for my wedding. I went on to earn my pro card in two natural bodybuilding federations as a bikini competitor and win my pro debut in 2016. And I've maintained a relatively lean physique since. So mistake number one, I thought for the longest time that exercise was the key to fat loss. What I would do is I would go to the gym, I'd get on a cardio machine, I'd screw around with some weights, and then I'd go home and I would just eat like I normally did. But I would also overcompensate because I was hungry from all that cardio. Cardio just makes me like, a, like ravenous. This is why now my main source of cardio is just walking 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day because it doesn't make me very hungry. Also, when I'm just getting into a new weight loss phase, I prioritize getting my calorie deficit down first. I'll take one up to two weeks just to master my calorie deficit before I even touch exercise. The reality is you don't even need exercise to lose fat. Just eat in a calorie deficit. Cardio activity is just a tool to make it go faster and strength training is what gives your body shape so you don't get skinny fat. Mistake number two, I believed intuitive eating would work for me. Intuitive eating is a way of eating popularized by this book and it took off in the height of diet culture because so many people have had horrible experiences with dieting. You might fall in that camp, I've fallen in that camp, a lot of people fall in that camp. As she talks about it in her book, there's 10 principles, 10, to intuitive eating, but the general gist is to be mindful and eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. Many fitness influencers to this day talk talk about intuitive eating as a good approach to weight loss. For example, one of the first fitness influencers I ever followed was Buff Bunny, and she posted this video called This Diet Worked For Me. And in this video, she talks about how she used intuitive eating to lose the weight. Because you don't have to track anything. Um, you do want to pay attention though. So that's the thing is like every intuitive eater is different. The way that I do it, I'm an intuitive eater. I eat when I'm hungry, I stop when I'm full. And I do pay attention to macros, but I don't track everything, I don't count any everything. I shoot for like at least 100 grams of protein, and then the rest goes to carbs and fat, and I intuitive eat with that. So what? What did what? Huh? You know, I've never tracked macros or weighed my food before, but this whole Buff Bunny diet just feels right to me. You know what I'm saying? Her videos just make me feel fuzzy inside. On the flip side, there's also nutrition influencers like Abby Shark who very clearly say intuitive eating is not for fat loss. Let's watch what she says. Will intuitive eating help me lose weight? Intuitive eating is not a weight loss diet. Let's get that clear. It's very clear that most influencers using this terminology just don't really understand it at all. Boom, she said it. I get that we can all aspire to be intuitive eaters, but for the majority of us that have some weight to lose, intuitive eating is not something you should even be considering for weight loss purposes. So I, for the longest period of time, felt like something was wrong with me because I couldn't just listen to my body. It wasn't until I started tracking and weighing my food that I really started to learn, huh, putting a meal together with enough protein, carbs, and fats really makes me feel full. And then I'm able to do other things besides focus on food for a solid three to four hours. It was great. At the height of my 2 a.m. Whataburger addiction, I was working like 80 to 90 hours a week across four jobs and just struggling to pay rent for my apartment next to Whataburger. And then I'd get really down on myself because in a moment of like a hangry, stressed out freak out, I would cave and I would eat the jar of peanut butter sitting in my apartment and that's what I would do. Yes, I aspired to be more mindful and yes, I aspired to intuitively eat one day, but at the time that just wasn't a realistic possibility for me to lose the weight that I had gained. Which leads me to mistake number three. I was afraid of tracking calories and weighing my food. One time I went out to a bar in my hot mess express phase and I saw this like really hot bartender and her arms just look amazing. What would you like to drink? Oh, I'll have an apple martini, please. 
And how do I get arms like you? Oh, I just eat lots of chicken and broccoli. So I went home and I started eating lots of chicken and broccoli and I actually gained weight. I got chubbier from eating chicken and broccoli. Because I felt so deprived of the foods I really loved while trying to eat clean with this chicken and broccoli diet, I would binge on foods I actually craved late at night. However, had I invested time upfront in just learning from tracking and weighing my food, I could have learned that there's no such thing as unhealthy or bad food foods, just unhealthy portion sizes. And so I could still enjoy all the things I love in moderation on my weight loss journey without creating these fear foods of anything that fell outside of my chicken and broccoli meal plan. You don't have to track and weigh your food forever. Even a lot of fitness influencers say that they'll go from periods of intuitive eating where they just like listen to their body a little bit. And then when they start to get a little bit more fluffy, they'll bring it in, they'll start tracking and weighing their food again. It's not about being married to your food scale or my fitness pal. It's it's about learning and then unlearning along your journey. Mistake number four, I didn't understand how to allocate macros when I was in my dieting phase. Many of you know macros are just protein, carbs, and fats. They serve different purposes to nourish your body. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is being in a calorie deficit. However, the key to sustaining a calorie deficit is just don't get hungry. That's the name of the game, don't get hungry. As soon as you get hungry, all bets are off, the little hangry monster comes out, and it's just just, it's just bad. Having a general idea of the macronutrient distribution you're consuming is very important to make sure that you stay feeling full. And if you stay full, you're more likely to adhere to your calorie deficit. Make sense? A macro breakdown that works for me to keep staying full, feeling satiated, and adhering to my calorie deficit is having about 30% of my calorie deficit coming from protein, 30% coming from fat, and about 40% coming from carbohydrates. What happens if if I'm not in the ballpark generally of hitting these macros over a period of a few days is on like day three, I'll start to get really hungry. And then all of a sudden I find myself like wandering into a 7-Eleven and just buying donuts and eating them. And I don't know what happened. I just black out. Mistake number five, and this one's huge. I would try to overcompensate when I had one of my 7-Eleven freakouts. This was mainly more so in my bikini competitor days because you had to be so black and white about your diet, what would happen is when I messed up, somehow I just like ate a donut or three. I would try and overcompensate the next day with doing more cardio or trying to eat less carbs and fats. And this was just a recipe for this horrible cycle of binging and over-exercising and feeling horrible. And that's just no way to live. Now, if that happens and I overeat on my diet for the day, I just stick to what I would normally eat on my daily diet, almost as if that 7-Eleven incident never happened. I just learn from it and I move on. So whatever you do, if you ever have a mess up in your diet, don't ever, ever, ever try and overcompensate by doing more cardio or eating less. Just eat as if you would normally eat so that you don't fall into any binge and restrict cycle. Mistake number six, I was afraid of building muscle. Have you ever noticed that the, pretty much like all the female fitness influencers or a lot of them are really, really short? My theory is that the short ones are building muscle because because they just want to be able to eat more. And I know that's the case for me. Like the more mass and the more muscle that I have, the more I weigh, the more I can eat and not gain too much fat. Amazing. Yay. I love you. But for the longest time, I thought that picking up the weights would just automatically like turn me into the okay. or something. It took me years of focused effort in the gym and being methodical about my nutrition to put on the muscle mass I was able to achieve here. The cool thing I've learned through bodybuilding is that you can use training to emphasize certain parts of your body and de-emphasize others. For example, I went through a phase where I brought down my quads and traps while maintaining the muscle I had built in my glutes. I've also gone through phases adding mass to my glutes while eating in a slight calorie surplus. You can literally reshape your body with the right training and nutrition, and that's what I love so much about lifting weights. If I were to stack priorities when it comes to actually losing fat, it would go like this. Very foundational, sleep. Get your sleep in order. Second thing, get your calorie deficit in order. Third thing, do some strength training. Focus on maintaining as much muscle mass as you have, and then maybe consider adding in some cardio. That's it for the day. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you learned something, consider subscribing, give this a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.